Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about file checksum. So let's dive right into it. Now, what exactly is the problem? Well, problem is majority of our storage medium are not perfect, meaning you store a file in hard drive does not mean it's there, it's intact forever. Uh, you could literally have a scenario where even in as few of a time, like as in like few months, it could be like data has bit rot now. So you have magnetic tape again, in principle, it can store data for 10 years, but you, I can guarantee you if you store a file long term, it's going to have bit rot. So in those sort of scenarios, you have to understand no storage medium is perfect. Then we come to the hard truth is that no file transfer if happening from point A to point B can be 100% secure. There could be very middle of the road attack kind of scenario where it's like file is going from A to B in that time somebody can inject something to it which is very difficult but doable and uh, many files are very sensitive even if it's not what you call mission critical you could literally have a scenario where you have downloaded a giant file but because it had minor bit issues poof the files are destroyed even though it file looks huge video files for example uh, you have right uh, basically or wrong specifically if you have very uh, right bit going wrong poof giant video file could be like yeah it cannot play anymore even though you could have as little as few bits error so many files are very very sensitive especially encrypted files single bit error can just poof them out of existence and many malwares can be injected so it's one of those things even if you are thinking that you are downloading from verified you could still have some Tokyo drifting somebody took you drifting into it and injecting malware and it could cause severe damage nowadays there are some malware some viruses that are so uh, you know brutal that the only thing you can do is take your hard drive eat it take your motherboard eat it because they are going to the firmware level and you cannot replace them anymore like you physically have to desolder the uh, basically bios chip basically you have to do something like that so these are brutal you have to make sure that you have to have a way where you can filter out whether the file is uh, you know reliable or have been tampered with so this is the problem so what's the logic behind it the logic is very simple file hashing is created uh, basically you take your file whatever the size may be maybe few gigabytes few terabytes whatever the file size you create a extract a hash out of it uh, using a checksum algorithm now you have a file you send a checksum algorithm you get the checksum data now it may look like encryption but here's the deal it is non-reversible meaning if you have the checksum data if checksum is not cracked uh, you should not be able to extract backwards and uh, Modern checks, uh, checksums are basically uncracked at this point in time, so it cannot be undone. Now, that's the whole point. That's why you do uh, you do not just send someone, oh, this is a checksum function and this is the text string, extract the file. That will be the most ultimate god tier, uh, basically, data compression. You can literally have gigabytes to be compressed into few milli, uh, basically, kilobytes, but it does not work that way. Hash function is just a signature that you are extracting using an algorithm and all it has to do is to make sure that no matter how small the change happens, single bit change should tamper the result. Meaning the red fox jumped over the blue dog, check some function, one data. You changed one letter from V to U, check some output. You change two letters, outcome is different. You change one letter, your outcome is different. You change space, outcome is different. You change text color, outcome is different. So you tamper with the file, outcome changes. And so all it is is a verification tool and that's how your passwords are stored in websites they never store directly the password itself they store the hash and every time you uh, re-enter the password they run the hash of that password they do not they themselves do not know that's the only way to uh, see, basically guarantee that if somebody hacks their uh, basically database they will have no access to the personal data Unfortunately, checksums that are very old and have directly been implemented, those are very easy to crack. Modern checksums are very robust and they have salting and peppering technology to make sure good luck with it. Like you can literally have a whole database and like they will be like, good luck trying to crack it. So that's the whole point. You have to take the text algorithm and that's all you have to send with the file. And those two data would be very small text file, meaning it's like uh, the numbers, uh, alphanumeric numbers and the algorithm. Like I'm using this algorithm. That's it. That's all you have to send with the file in order to uh, create a signature that can be used to verify have the file been sent intactly or have, there have been a tamper with it. So all recipient have to do is redo this process. That's why I specified it does. It cannot be done undone basically. So you redo the function and if the input is the same output with the same and you verify it and even a single bit change should be detectable and it only uh, job it is is that if it fails like you run a checksum algorithm it fails it's gonna alert you it does not fix the file it does not like oh this file has been the malicious where i'm gonna remove this no it's just like nope that's all it does fail checksum is gonna do that and you have to be very mindful of that checksum is a filtering tool it's not a repairing tool it's not a parity calculation all it does is just like is the file the same file that you thought you downloaded or is there something tampered with that's all there is to it. it's a, like a tamper seal so that's the logic behind it 
So what about the tools? Do we have the tools? Well, uh, yes and no. Majority of the people have Microsoft Windows and it has that. They have added this in inbuilt function that is FCIV. Problem with this puppy is it's uh, basically command line only. Why? I have no idea, but it's there. So for common people, I can urge you to use MD5 hash checker uh, 4 dot tool. Who came up with the name but again this is the tool and it has a lot of algorithm even though the name has md5 and md5 is not that amazing anymore it has md5 it has crc32 sha1 a1 is also compromised it has sha224 very robust sha256 uh, modern standard h uh, h sha384 sha512 be mindful uh, you can have checksum that are super complex but consequence it will also take very long time to compute so there's always a checks and balance you cannot have like a customer is logging in and it's a computer's background is like okay i'm gonna crunch it it's like no uh, you have to balance it out so that's why many company do not just go even though like 512 bit is available and it's got tier level encryption they do not do it because it wastes too much computational power so if five uh, basically 256 is more than good enough they're gonna stop at 256 so that's one tool. It has a lot of options. Then there is another tool, multi-hasher. Now benefit of the multi-hasher is that it can take care of folders. Now be mindful, only files can be uh, extracted as in like you can extract the signature of a file, not of a folder. So if you have to do a folder, let's say you are archiving something, can compress all of them, not compress, just bind them into one container. Uh, that container could be your, you know, uh, a zip file basically you put them in container then you extra uh, run the checksum then you can get it or you can do multiple files at once also that can be done but be mindful at that point you have to check it manually it does have benefit uh, that if you are let's say you stored 10 video files you done checksum regularly and you're like hey one video file was corrupted because checksum did not you know what exactly went wrong if you're doing it on RAR level you know one of those files are corrupted so that's why it has that multi uh, basically folder option but be mindful only files can be checksummed so far again there may be some other tool that i'm not aware of but uh, so far everything i've seen is just like hey multiple files in means multiples checksum out so these are the uh, few tools you already have if you are comfortable with command line microsoft has a whole guide for it if you are not comfortable with that you have md5 hash checker you have to do multiple files i would urge you to look into multi hasher these two are good tools and there are many 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 more tools these are tools should get you started basically so we come to the first layer, the internet layer. Now we all download a lot of stuff from web. That's that's one of the basic thing. And file can be damaged in transfer, not just from a malicious internet. You have to understand, anytime you are transferring file through internet, it has a lot of error correction. So sometimes error correction can misinterpret the data and outcome could be corrupted. In those sort of time, you need a way to double check it basically. And malware injection is possible to be done. By many times you're like, you go to a website, website is full, uh, fully saturated. They will like click this mirror website. You go to mirror website, Download the file, you do a sanity check, oh, 11 GB, 11 GB, file size, file extension, it's okay, but here's the deal. If uh, people are good, you will not be able to spot it that easily. So at that point in time, tempering ISO becomes a common thing and people have done that. And if you watch any people talking about like ISOs in Linux world, they are always like, make sure the checksum is right. Make sure you have clean uh, ISO. It's like, what the hell is clean ISO? Clean ISO is basically means you have checked it, that you know for a fact that ISO has not been corrupted. And because again, if you corrupt, have a corrupted ISO and you use that to install operating system, there is a very good chance you have a backdoor that cannot be closed anymore. So for that reason, you have to understand, you can never uh, rely on the whole pipeline. So for that reason, you have to have checked some function. So for example, if you downloaded Windows 11 or 10, you go to the web, uh, Microsoft website, they will be like, okay, using SHA 256 bit system, this is the uh, hatch checksum basically and based on the language pack you select there will be a different uh, outcome arabic belgium like i used uh, english international so i got this if you're downloading vlc they're gonna say like hey uh, use the checksum again same checksum of like a sha 256 that should be the checksum outcome you're downloading linux mint isos they're gonna say this is the checksum and the codex should be sha algorithm sha 256 you go uh, basically Ubuntu mate, uh, same thing. That's the whole idea of it. You're downloading a file. How do you know the file is intact? So you trust the source, but you don't trust what happens in between or you are like somebody else is giving you a file. It's like, hey, I have downloaded the Ubuntu file. Just take it from it. You're like, why the hell I want to waste data bandwidth? You may be like, okay, I'm just gonna run a checksum to filter it out. So if they are trolling you, you'll be like, bro, I got you. So this is first line of defense. Be mindful. This is not what we call got tier. This is a very good first line of defense. Can it be breached? So far, not really, but uh, be mindful. There are still other ways of hijacking and still other ways of that. It's just one of those things that adds an extra layer of armor. Ask any security professional. 
they're going to tell you flat out everything can be hacked all you are doing if you are doing proper security procedures making it difficult you are not making like oops you should not go down because oops that's the whole point of it you should not go down because of oops checksum is a very good first layer armor especially if you are downloading operating system images because if your operating system is corrupt nothing else will work then we come to the backups. This is why I am interested in it because here's the backup size could be huge. Like I'm backing up all the video files that I have made from this channel and some of them went poof because of a bit rot. So that creates a scenario because here's the deal. The, I have 200 videos per playlist. So practically it's impossible for me to play all video. I, oh, and be mindful. All playlists have 200 videos plus 200 because again, they are available in Hindi and English. So that creates a scenario where so many video files are there, I cannot play them again and again and again to double check it every month also. So that becomes flat out not practical. And I'm just a small YouTuber. Imagine something huge. Imagine a database server like that. In those sort of scenarios, it's flat out not practical. So you create clumps of data, meaning if I'm saving files, once I reach 10, marker 10, basically episode 10 to 20, I'll create a clump of it. I create that clump, pack them into zip file, extract the uh, checksum of it then keep that file and then test it periodically be mindful all it just checksum is doing is giving you a alert if something has gone wrong so do not use this as like oh i have checksum data so that means my file is safe no all it means is that you can figure out the file is intact or not so you have to have two backups meaning for example my hard drives that are active and let's say one of the offline systems so if something bad happens let's say i detected i have been you know something malicious has done so my offline would be safe but how would i know that offline it Self is intact then I can write checksum and that's why 321 is there there's a very clear saying one file copy means zero copy two means one that's why you always have to have three two one system and one of them have to be offline another one have to be off-site also and again checksum is the only way you can be damn sure especially if you're talking about large files and long duration duration can also cause havoc and when you're talking about very large file transfer file transfer itself is not absolute uh, you know reliable especially if you're transferring hundreds of terabytes you'll be like dang and that's why you go to any database software, you'll always be like, verify backup when finished, perform checksum while writing to media. Always will be there. And that's the whole point. Like if you have seen tape drives that are used for enterprise grade uh, backups, how do they know the data on the tape is intact? They don't. So what they do is every few months, they run a checksum again. So they will have two uh, players. So they're like, okay, checksum, checksum, checksum. All it does is tells you if something is right or wrong. So you are running through, let's say, 100 cassettes. You're like, okay, one cassette through a error. Then you figure out which file was there. Then you figure out where was the another copy of it. Then you extract it. Then you either you throw away the tape or rewrite it. So that bit error has been fixed. So be mindful. You always have to have two copies because again, yeah, I have stored all my file. Yes, all my file is corrupt. Then what's the point? So for that reason, you have to have two. Please have two. And all you have to do, is you have to have a clean file in order to save a corrupted file. And that's the whole point. Backups also need this. And uh, I have linked a video down below of line status when this sort of backup function is also done in the background in the operating system of network attached storage. Sometimes you uh, miss something uh, like, you know, do not click this function, uh, bad things happen. So they almost lost entirety of their archive because of misconfiguration. So be mindful, backups also need checksum. So this was my presentation on checksum. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike. Press it twice to show me extra support. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.